Hello everybody and welcome back to this week's video or welcome if you're new here. Today I wanted to show you some real-time painting process footage of me turning the sketch of some lemons that I should have showed you in my sketchbook uh, into a full watercolour painting. So I recorded the full process of this in real time and mainly I've just edited it down. I haven't sped any of this footage up. Um, I just cut out the parts where I was doing a lot of hovering and hesitating. It's amazing when you film yourself drawing and painting, you don't realize just how much you fiddle. Like when I was uh, filming the sketch portion of this video that you're watching right now, I didn't realize how often I sort of flick and turn my pencils when I'm drawing. Anyway, this would be a good video to just have on the background, um, grab a cup of tea and just join me while I paint. So as you can see right now, I am just sketching out the basic composition of these lemons and a couple of little lemon flowers. Um, my plan was to do this just like as a vibrant, uh, sort of semi-loose watercolour painting with like a nice sort of abstract border. Um, and I was just sketching it out. I used a watercolour pencil for the, the light grey pencil as a watercolour pencil. And then this light yellow pencil I'm using is just a regular polychromos coloured pencil. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been experimenting with using watercolour pencil for drawing outlines, but my problem with watercolour pencils is that all of the leads always feel so crumbly. I didn't have this issue with the Inktense pencils, but with this, um, Albrecht Dürer um, regular watercolour pencil from Faber-Castell and then also with the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle pencil I have, I find that they're just very crumbly. But yes. Anyway, I hope you enjoy watching me uh, draw and paint in real time. I always find this footage quite relaxing and nice to share um, the process with you. Part of the inspiration for drawing and painting some lemons today was I was thinking about the conundrum that we have when it comes to creating interesting granulating colours and specifically interesting granulating yellows. Because there aren't that many like naturally granulating yellow pigments, bright yellow pigments anyway. I know that so Schmincke's uh, super granulating range includes a colour they call volcano yellow which I believe is uh, pigment um, PY 159 uh, and it's also sold by Windsor and Newton as lemon yellow deep and I think I will try and get hold of it at some point but the granulation isn't super obvious because you know it's yellow so it's a super light color uh, and so I, I was looking for ways to make granulating yellows effective in a painting and in the end I came up with some interesting mixes that I used uh, to shade these lemons in this video so now that the sketch is done, I moved on to the painting portion of this video. So to in total, the whole process, I think, took me about less than an hour. I think I think I was watching The Witcher. I think it took me one episode of The Witcher to do this painting, <laughs> which really makes me think I should do more painting because it doesn't take as long as I think just to do a basic painting. Um, and this video is just shorter because I cut it down a lot when I was doing the editing. But you can see me here um, collecting the colours I was going to use. I used the Aquarius Yellow by Roman Schmoll uh, and this uh, titanium uh, nickel titanate yellow that I already had sitting on my palette from Schmincke uh, to create this sort of like basic, very nice bright lemon yellow mixture that I used for the, for the lemons. And the warmer shade of yellow that you see on the bottom of my palette there is actually Naples Yellow Deep PBR24, which is a... Uh, it's another titanium based color, I think. But anyway, it's a very granulating golden yellow. Um, and I thought that it would be a perfect mixture to shade this lemon with. So I decided to leave the lemon in the background, just like a plain, very light color, so it wouldn't stand out too much and put most of the shading into the lemon on the front in the end. So you'll see me experimenting with those mixtures uh, later in the video anyway. But this is the first time that I've really done like a full watercolor painting in, in quite some time. Uh, and it was nice to, instead of just like playing around with color mixes and swatching, which is always really fun and makes me very happy, to feel a little bit like, yeah, actually I can paint something. So I hope that's also a nice change for this channel. 
So here I'm showing you which greens I'm using for the leaves. So I didn't include many greens, I just used this one convenience green, which is Hooker's Green. It's a mixture of Prussian Blue and Nicolazo Yellow, from uh, also from Roman Schmoll, which I decided would make a nice basic mixture for the leaves. And um, you'll see in the upcoming footage that I just put like a very basic layer of mixing this green with the lemon yellow and also with the Naples yellow deep uh, just to create like a background wash on all of these leaves and then shading them a bit later. I was quite pleased with the composition of this image and uh, how it turned out basically. It's interesting that when you do something in a sketchy way, just in a sketchbook and you just uh, have the messy lines in pencil and then just some basic washing uh, of watercolour over the top, it always looks so much better than when I try and do it in a final painting. Um, so that's a conundrum for the ages for sure, I'm sure I'm not the only person who experiences that effect. But I really loved the glowing green mixtures that I got with the with these mixtures. Um, I think that the colours that I chose were really, really perfect and they really gave this feeling of brightness and summer and this sort of zingy citrus scene that I was painting. On the day that I'm recording this video, I'm feeling a little bit tired because I walked uh, 20 kilometers. I don't know how far that is in miles. I've forgotten how to think in miles since I left the UK. But uh, I walked 20 kilometers and it rained really heavily the whole time. Uh, I was with a group of people. <laughs> so it was a bit, it was interesting to try and keep up morale uh, when we didn't really know where we were going and also got very, very wet during the process. So. Yeah, fingers crossed I don't get sick because I have to travel uh, a lot next week. Which is also a little bit stressful in and of itself because it means that I feel like I have to record uh, ahead a little bit to catch up. Uh, so I don't have to miss any uploads because I'm going to be in France next weekend and then in Copenhagen the weekend after that. Which is incredibly exciting and uh, don't get me wrong, I totally appreciate my uh, privilege in being able to do that. The trip to France is for work. so. Yeah, not, not, not so amazing, but I, I'm really excited to go and do some traveling right now this summer. I mean, I feel like I've been trying to pack stuff in to make the most of the warm months, knowing that there's gonna be another long winter coming up and we've been having quite a nice summer here. Except for today, of course, the one day that I decided to go on a long hike in the middle of the woods, uh, we get absolutely drenched in rain. Anyway, back to the painting briefly, you can see me mixing this uh, Naples Yellow Deep with the Aquarius Yellow. I did some experimenting with mixing uh, other granulating deep yellows uh, to create this sort of shading for yellow objects. Um, and this was partially inspired by looking into Da Vinci watercolours, which is a brand from the US which I don't really have access to. but. I noticed that a lot of their mixtures, uh, including their yellow mixtures, include um, yellow ochre or a granulating yellow earth colour, PY42. So I was intrigued and I tried out a bunch of my colours and none of them really that I have right now anyway. Uh, I definitely will be looking to invest in some more in the future to uh, check it out. But none of the colours I have right now would provide the, the saturation that I was looking for in the granulating deeper yellow. But this Naples Yellow Deep totally does, and I think it's a very, very interesting colour to mix with. I think it also mixes really lovely olivey greens with that Hooker's Green. Like, makes really nice muted mixtures that are just so nice and warm. I think I'm lucky that I used Aquarius Yellow in the lemon because Aquarius Yellow is a very pushy colour and pushes other colours out of the way, so when I added the stem there, even though the lemon, uh, the paint on the lemon is still damp, it didn't run into the lemon because I think the Aquarius Yellow pushed it away. And you can see me mixing this lovely olivey green, <laughs> murky olivey green with this uh, Naples Yellow Deep and the Hooker's Green, which I also really love. And I think that using just very few colors in this piece um, really helped it be cohesive in the end and I really, really enjoyed it. But yeah, I hope everyone's enjoying their summer. I uh, bought an e-reader, like a Kindle, the other day, also anecdotally, since I've got about 16 hours of train travel coming up in the next <laughs> few weeks, I thought maybe I would actually read a book uh, if I had access to such a facility. And traveling with paper book copies is just not practical because they're so heavy. 
um, so I decided to pick up an e-reader and I already downloaded a whole ton of books so I'm hoping to get into reading also while I'm doing all this traveling this summer I feel like quite often in summer there's a bit of a pressure to pack in all the fun stuff you know see everybody that you love to hang out with and spend time outdoors and stuff and sometimes it can be a bit much you know but I, I know that I won't regret it when it when it's winter and I at least have some nice memories of spending time outside in the sunshine to look back on I always I always feel like <sighs> already a little bit sad that summer is ending when the lilacs uh, go out of season which only happens in June so yeah I guess I, I live my life in apprehension of the winter which is not very good I should probably work on that but at least in the meantime we can always paint nice bright summery images to remind us of what it was like when it was summer um, Anyone watching this from the Southern Hemisphere is like, Jules, stop rattling on about summer because it's winter here and everything sucks. And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. But I am also dreading winter, so solidarity to those people. And also there's a lot of people suffering with, a lot, with really bad summers this year. I know extremely bad heat and flooding and stuff. So I also know that I don't have that much to complain about really. So in addition to the green and yellow colours that you've seen so far, um, you'll see me add later a little bit of shading to the flowers uh, of this lemon tree using, uh, I think it's Shadow Grey by um, Rome Schwalm again. These are all mostly colours from my uh, <laughs> signature palette. Oh, yeah, I got some green on my lemon. Oh, that was a tragic, tragic moment. But I think we saved it. You can only see a little bit and... Uh, if you didn't watch this video, I don't know if you would notice that it was there. But I always find it hard to paint white things, uh, and lemon flowers are white, mostly. So I decided to include a little bit of the shadow grey, um, just to shade and produce the effect of the flowers being white, because I couldn't really use the existing colours I had done so far for that. But the signature palette thing is working out really well. What colors did I use from that here today? I used the Hooker's Green and the uh, Nickel Titanate Yellow. And also I used Cobalt Blue when I was doing the border, which I'll explain to you when it's on screen. But the Aquarius Yellow and the um, Naples Yellow Deep are not in the signature palette. They were very specifically for a lemon themed uh, painting. So I put in the stamens of the um, lemon flowers using the Naples Yellow Deep and now I was just using some clean water to try and lift and create a little bit of a, the depiction of a shine on the lemon and later on I also go back and do that again just to lift it a little bit further. But I think I also learned painting this that the Aquarius Yellow was quite a staining pigment. It didn't lift very effectively at all. Anyway, here you can see me shading with the shadow grey, those flowers, and I didn't speed up any of this footage because I feel like it's nice to see how people apply paint to paper and it just becomes like a super relaxing thing to watch. So I'll leave you with this here for now and then I'll pop back in a little bit later when there's something else to talk about that's going on screen. Hope you enjoy this relaxing footage for a couple minutes. After I finished the flowers, I decided that the leaves were looking a little bit dull, I guess because the mixing the Naples Yellow Deep in with the green does make it a bit dull and they only had a light wash on to begin with. 
And so I decided to go over with a very light glaze of the Aquarius yellow with a little bit of the hooker's green mixed in. And looking back on this footage, I'm honestly a little bit afraid. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was a bold move. But in the moment, I don't know, I guess I felt like I was in control and it seemed like the right thing to do. And uh, I, I like the results, so, you know, no complaints. But um, as you can see, it was lifting a little bit the color underneath from the green layers before. I'm painting this on relatively affordable, just cellulose uh, watercolor paper by Claire Fontaine, their gold line uh, aqua pad, I think, if I remember correctly. So I wasn't expecting amazing performance from this paper, but somehow I find myself more likely to paint if I have paper that I know I can easily replace, paper that I have a whole pad of, and I just wanted to do a low pressure little painting to try and get into painting a bit more. And also painting before I have the <laughs> very limited facilities for painting in the next couple of weeks. So enjoying uh, doing some of that while I can. But yeah, I think this paper held up pretty well, actually. That was also maybe contributing to my issues with lifting earlier was the, was the paper. Paper is so important when it comes to watercolor, but for now I'm just mostly practicing and I think this paper does a really good job, frankly. Um, and I'd say this painting came out pretty much exactly as I was hoping. So after I added a little bit more depth uh, and vibrancy to the stems of this, I came back in and lifted a little bit more colour, a little bit more effectively this time, I guess because it was already on a thinner layer of paint. I probably could have gone bolder with the values. Um, I added a little bit more shading later, but look at those mixtures on my palette. Uh, the way they separate and blend together is so satisfying. And I was really enjoying how they were all layering together on the paper at this point. You can see that granulation from the Naples Yellow Deep in the shading on the lemon. And I think that that mixture works so well uh, for that purpose. Um, as you can see, I'm just removing tape from the edge and you can see that I traced the inside edge of the tape using it sort of the width of the tape as a border so that I could create a space for me to put a decorative edge on uh, my painting, which is something that I thought might be quite nice. I think it, in the end, this painting might be nice to like hang up in a kitchen or a bathroom or something. It's got very Greek color vibes. So I mixed cobalt blue, regular cobalt blue um, pigment PB28 with cobalt blue deep PB74 to create a bit more of an interesting, varied, granulating blue mixture. This paper doesn't show granulation the best uh, ever, but I still really uh, enjoyed working with this mixture and I think it was definitely the right call in the end. And I was totally just freewheeling this border. I didn't plan it, I didn't sketch it, I did nothing. I didn't even plan the color mixture. I just had it in my head. Uh, and I thought, okay, well, we'll go with like some little flower motifs in the corners and add some diagonal lines to the rest of it and hope for the best. <laughs> I think I cut out a lot of the time uh, from this painting process by cutting out a lot of the border painting, by the way. So don't worry, you don't need to watch me paint every single line. I think I show you this footage of me uh, just doing the one edge and then I skip through a lot of it uh, and just show you the summary of painting the other edges because it was so repetitive. As you can see, I'm so hesitant when I'm doing these strokes because I wanted them to be straight and parallel and I didn't know the angle so I spent so much time just hovering my brush over the paper and willing the courage to put the stroke down. Um, as you can see here, I'm. this is the third brush I've used. I used a small number two for the details in the flowers and also for the, the smaller elements on the border and then I switched to this flat brush uh, which is just a very like super cheap school grade um, brush that I used to use just for like acrylics or whatever. But the shape of it and the fact that it doesn't hold so much water makes it actually really perfect for this kind of uh, graphic uh, painting that I'm doing for the border. Um, it has a really nice even line width and yeah, I, I think in the end 
despite the uh, inevitable inconsistencies in my lines, you can't really tell and I think it adds to the charm and this brush was really perfect for that, so yeah, nice addition to the collection. After I did the lines, I decided that it needed something in the spaces between, and so I sort of went with this um, half sun or half flower kind of approach. I'm um, just putting a little circle and like five lines coming off it in the spaces in between the triangles, and I think it worked really well. Um, I really like this little detail in the border. I don't think it's too much, I don't think it's too little. I really do love that colour as well, so yeah patting myself on the back but I, uh, I'm, I, it gave me a lot of confidence to see that I was making <laughs> good decisions when looking back at this footage uh, and as you can see it took me a little while to put uh, all of these little details in so I didn't uh, include too much of that footage and then I moved on to do the rest of the edges. So with the border done, I didn't show you any of the other two sides, but it was exactly the same process, just repeated. <laughs> I decided I would come back in and add a little bit more value to the underside of the lemon. And I did this with a very, with my very small brush that I've been using for the details because I didn't want to mess up anything else I'd already done. And I just added a bit of the neat Naples Yellow Deep onto the bottom edge of the lemon around the flower and also around the whatever the knobbly bit at the end of the lemon is called. I'm sure it has a name. I don't know it though. And then just blending it out into the rest of the lemon. I, I, I was kind of afraid it was going to look super patchy, um, but in the end, I think it dried down okay. And I, yeah, it gave the effect that I wanted. Thank you so much for coming on this uh, journey with me today. I hope you enjoy this painting. Consider liking and, and subscribing if you did and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everybody.